Hey Taurus, welcome to your weekly forecast for November 8th through the 14th. As you can see a difference in background here, I am yet again on the road. <laughs> Story of my life. However, we still need to get your weekly messages to you. You guys still need your weekly forecasts, so we're going to keep them coming here. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. Now I'm setting the intention for the 8th through the 14th. However, my dears and my darlings, you might stumble upon this video outside of that date. That's all fine. That's all good. You're going to find it when you're ready to hear the messages. Keep in mind, these are general readings for the collective. Uh, some is going to resonate. Some isn't. Take what resonates. Leave what doesn't. Let's see what's going on here. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. We're coming out of that new moon in Scorpio energy. And we're going to see how the energies are going to be felt by you all, Taurus folk. And what is coming up for you. So, first card coming up here, my dears and my darlings, is the King of Cups. You might be feeling that Scorpio water energy still. You may be feeling the influence of water. Okay, because this is a water sign card. Traditionally speaking... King of Cups can definitely be a water sign person coming into a situation, being a Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces. It could be you if you have a water sign placement. Now, I know a lot of people are used to watching tarot because of love and romance, and King of Cups gets typecast as like marriage, right? Oh, somebody wants to marry me. Oh, I'm getting married. And that can be the case for some of you, but if you're new to my channel, in the weekly forecasts, I try to focus on you, your journey, your growth, your development, and I do love separately on my channel. Love and Romance for November is linked in the description, so be sure to check that out after this video if you want like more of a detailed love reading. But we're going to look at the other ways that King of Cups applies. King of Cups is a card of uh, emotional uh, availability, emotional depth, uh, generosity, abundance, Okay, and so this can come up at a time when we're dealing with someone who is being generous or loving or uh, emotionally supportive or there for us. You may be stepping into that energy. Some of you have heard me say that a lot of the times I see King of Cups come up when you're balancing generosity. Like in the past, you've been generous to people and you've gotten taken advantage of, you've gotten burned. And then you're like, oh, to heck with this. I've learned my lesson. And then you're not generous and you try to protect yourself. And then people are like, oh, look at you. You're so stingy. Oh, you're so selfish. Oh, you're so greedy. And you're like, I can't win. I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. When I'm generous, I get taken advantage of. When I try to protect myself, people accuse me of being selfish. And you're like, I just, I can't win. So when I see King of Cups, King of Cups for me, is very generous, but he's nobody's fool, right? He makes me think of like a very uh, generous but firm and fair parent, right? A kid comes up to their parents and says, please let me borrow the car Friday night. I want to go out with my friends, right? All right, okay, fine. You can borrow the car Friday night, but here's a list of chores that need to be done around the house. Um, you're going to have to earn your money to go out that night. So here's how, you know, here's what you're going to do to earn however much. And then when you bring the car back to me, you're going to bring the car back to me clean and you're going to have gas in the tank. You're not going to bring me back a dirty car with an empty tank of gas. Not going to happen, right? The child is like, okay, wonderful, great deal, right? So that kid knows, that kid knows that he, he or she is going to have, um, uh, benefits, right? But also knows what's expected for them from them in return. So the King of Cups is going to be generous, but he's not going to be taken advantage of. And it's really understood what the expectation is, right? You have to come at him with respect. He's not just going to willy nilly give anybody whatever they ask for, like a doormat. So I see King of Cups coming up for people a lot of the times when they're balancing generosity and people are learning that, okay, you know what, this is a nice person, this is a kind person, 
but you also need to be respectful. You also need to be appreciative. You also need to, um, you know, know uh, how to approach this person, which can be very true for Taurus because Taurus, you guys are very much um, connected with the material realm. You are an earth sign after all, but Taurus loves to work hard and play hard, right? You like the finer things in life. And so when people are rolling with you, a lot of the times they get to benefit from that right? Or Taurus is going to be wanting to provide a good standard of life for their family, right? Or for their loved ones. And maybe, maybe for some of you, these people have gotten out of balance, right? Like they're being a little bit too demanding or they're expecting it. And you're like, wait a minute now, <laughs> I'm not obligated to do any of this for you, right? These are extras. These are perks. And you're going to have to earn your perks, Okay, sometimes I see King of Cups to come up in that way. I do feel, Taurus, that a lot of you are coming into a time of healing um, that is connecting to strengthening your psychic gifts and abilities. And I feel that a part of that process is you're going to find that you're having a lot of creative energy flowing through you. So I also feel a sense of creativity um, where you're finding like inspiration and you're doing very creative things. And for some of you, this is opening up avenues to abundance or um, uh, supplemental income for some of you. Uh, you're discovering talents you didn't know that you had. And it's also for some of you benefiting you financially. The next card that's coming up here for you guys is the Three of Swords. Now, Three of Swords, I feel, is a continuation of what I was saying, right? Some of you are realizing that you've been giving and you've been generous, but you have people who are being disrespectful or unappreciative or entitled to what you've been doing for them. And so for me, Three of Swords can come up as a revelation of truth. When Spirit starts to show you who does not have your back, right? Who are maybe unnecessary sacrifices for you? You've been sacrificing for these people unnecessarily because they're not doing for you what you've been doing for them, right? And so sometimes the Three of Swords comes up when Spirit is showing us the truth about people or situations around us because we've been giving too much. And Spirit is saying, this is not fair. We're tired of this and we don't want to see Taurus in this situation anymore it's upsetting them right like imagine if you had a really good friend someone you really cared about you really loved this friend a lot this friend was very generous this friend was very loving right and you all had like this circle of friends or circle of, of or like this group or this family and every time your friend left the room everyone who was benefiting from your friend starts talking about them behind their back making fun of them laughing at them right? Or like your friend comes into the room and somebody else is crying and saying, oh my gosh, please, please help me. You know, I'm having a terrible time financially and, you know, I can't get my kids food and they're really struggling. And your friend's like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Here you go. You know, don't worry about paying me back or pay me back whenever. And when your friend leaves the room and that person starts laughing and saying, oh, I'm going to go get a new bag. I'm going to go get new shoes. I'm going to go on vacation. Thank you. And you find out that that person was lying to get the money out of your friend. You would feel horrible, right? You would hate it. And you might even kind of poke those people and say, you need to tell them the truth. You have to stop being two-faced. But after a certain amount of time, you're like, you have to let your friend know. These people are not your friend. These people do not have your back. They're coming at you asking you for money. They're pretending like they need your help, but they're taking advantage of the situation. They're even lying to you about stuff to get stuff out of you. Don't do anything for them anymore, right? You would let your friend know eventually because you're going to hate seeing that. This is a good person. It really sucks the way that the people are treating them and acting with them. And so spirit does that for us sometimes because spirit sees all, right? There's things happening behind closed doors that we don't know about. There's things happening, you know, in, in, in the dark that are going to get dragged out into the light. And a lot of the times that's the energy and the feeling I see around three of swords. A truth is being revealed to free you from uh, sacrifices 
and misplaced loyalty that you shouldn't even have to make, right? Because the energy is going to the wrong person, the wrong place, and the wrong thing. One more thing I will say about the Three of Swords before I move on. Yes, it hurts. It stings really bad. But my experience is that it's over very quickly. Okay, and I've given you guys this example before. I used to teach preschool and the babies would be running around the playground and one would fall and hurt their knee and they'd be screaming and crying like it was the end of the world. It was real. It was genuine. You know, falling scared them. That got them all emotional. Physically, it hurt. They're crying because of the physical pain. They're crying because of the shock. It's real and it's genuine. But you give them an ice pack, you give them a, a band-aid and a little bit of a, a little hug. And like, you know, less than a minute later, they're running off and they're a T-Rex again or they're a superhero again. Like it never even happened. So it's intense, but it's over quickly. This isn't going to be like a long drawn out depression. This isn't going to be a long drawn out heartache. It's going to hurt. You're going to get it out of your system and you're going to stand up and you're going to say, I'm good, right? You're going to brush your shoulders off and on with it. On to the next adventure. Your next card coming up here, Taurus, is the star. Who else got the star? I think it was Pisces. Some of you could be dealing with a Pisces or if you have a Pisces placement, um, this is kind of like a emphasis for you to, to pay attention to this card. Now, astrologically speaking, as far as the Zodiac goes, the star card is associated with Aquarius. So some of you could be dealing with an Aquarius. Okay, if you have an Aquarius placement, there can be big changes and big shifts happening for you in that area of your life. Now, the star card is very special because the star card comes to us with the energy of um, happiness, right? Great success. The star card in the tarot follows the tower. It's the card after the tower. So basically, the star card is telling us the worst of it is over, right? The destruction is behind us. The chaos is behind us. The worst of it is over. And now we can expect for things to get better. Now we can make plans that are actually going to stick, that are actually going to uh, be successful. One of the meanings of the star card is long-term uh, abundance and comfortable, abundant retirement. So some of you are going to be freeing up uh, some resources here that you're going to be able to put into your retirement or your long-term stability or security. The star card is getting out of the darkness, a shining light, being a source of inspiration and guiding and leading others. I feel some of you feel like you have a life story that you need to share, that you need to tell. And some of you might be putting it in the form of a book or a novel or a screenplay. Some of you might be doing motivational speaking or like a big brother or big sister type program, right? Some of you might be doing outreach within your community where you're wanting to reach out to young ones who you know what they're going through and you know how hard it is to break out of those darkness, uh, those cycles of darkness and those, you know, family origins that are dark or lower vibrational. And so some of you are doing some kind of outreach or, or, or teaching, teaching younger ones, or it doesn't have to be younger, right? Maybe you came out of a, a life of addiction and you're wanting to help other people who are coming out of addiction. Or maybe you left a, you know, a, a, a terrible, uh, you know, a d domestically abusive situation, right? And now you're going to want to help other people. You're like, I know it's hard. I know it's not easy to leave, but I left and I'm going to help other people leave. And so I feel some of you, it's like, it's like your your way to freedom, right? Like, like, like I know the way out and I'm going to help you get out of it. So I feel like, like almost a rescue mission for some of you. Uh, and it makes sense because another element of the star card is the wounded healer, right? It's the path of the wounded healer. The most powerful healers are the ones that have had to heal really massive wounds within themselves. Those are the most powerful healers. 
okay and so i feel that a lot of you are um are, are healing something really significant and you're showing other people the way and spirit is showing you the people in the situations that have been taking your time and energy that don't deserve it to free you up to where you can really be of true assistance to people who really deserve it right and also it's something that's fulfilling for you it's something that that's helping you to feel inspired and feel joy and feel power your next card coming up here for you taurus is the three of wands and the three of wands is a card that a lot of the times will come up in terms of collaborating with others coming together with others and collaborating or um, it's definitely a self-employment card in terms of launching a product or an idea putting it out there and seeing you know how it goes typically the three of wands lets us know that what we're putting out or launching or introducing is going to go well it's going to bring back profit for us it's also going to be a time for us to like look at the situation and perfect it like really fine tune it and tweak it here's what went well right here's what i can improve and the next time whoa we're going to do even better we're going to really clean house right so it, it, it's a positive return uh that's only going to get better for you with the experience that it's bringing for you Three of Wands is also a card that comes in with a message of like the point of no return. There's no going back now. What you've seen, you can't unsee, right? Or you've had this mental awakening. You've had this enlightenment, right? Uh, you're out of the box. You can't go back in the box. It's just, it's a new way of thinking in a, in a sense of like mental expansion, all right. Um, so there's definitely this this sense of seeing a lot more, um, you know, having a new way of looking at life, having a new way of looking at the world, having a new approach. I feel for some of you, for whatever reason, um, <laughs> um, oh gosh, there's a there's a very well known and please forgive me guys if I'm mispronouncing it because. I'm not a, a Spanish speaker, um, and I'm not someone who is, you know, really great with languages. But there's a song called El Condor Pass. I'm saying it very, very like, <laughs> very English version. El Condor Pass. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it might be taken from like an Inca folk song that was like modernized and then... I think like it's popular in Ecuador. You guys will have to correct me because I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the most knowledgeable um, about it. But it's a really beautiful melody, okay. And I know it's not a Simon and Garfunkel song. I really want to emphasize that. Don't come at me in the comments and say, oh, you know, no, that's that's from a much deeper, much more meaningful culture. I know, I know, Paul Simon didn't write the song. I know that, but. I'm hearing uh, a song that Paul Simon, uh, Simon and Garfunkel did using the El Condor Pass music, right? He kind of added his own little words to it. Uh, and Spirit is bringing that song to my mind. So I would say listen to that song um, by Simon and Garfunkel. I don't know if he has it listed as El Condor Pass, um, but I'm sure if you Google it, it, it it'll come up. Um, I remember hearing that song in my childhood on a camping trip with my family. Um, my dad popped in the cassette and I was listening to it and it, it blew my little, you know, four-year-old mind. Uh, I just had this mini baby awakening. Um, something about the tune and then the words of the song, right? And like being out in nature, connecting with nature. I feel like a lot of you are having... A really significant awakening this week and in the coming weeks where you're feeling very in tune with the earth right I remember it was at that age that I realized or I felt the earth was alive that there was energy in the trees that there was energy in the water that I felt like you know in my little mind I was like oh my god God is in the trees you know and so I feel a lot of you 
are having this powerful connection to nature and this powerful awakening. And maybe that song in itself might stir something up in you emotionally. Um, but for whatever reason, Spirit is bringing that song to my mind right now. And I feel just a sense of awakening, inspiration, being very grounded, being in your body, being very connected with nature, being very connected with life force, uh, with God, with universe. Um, it's a very powerful awakening that I feel a lot of you are going to be coming into, right? So you're going to have a massive truth revealed to you. And then like this sense of being on this purposeful path and a very powerful awakening. This is big energy, okay? So you might say, wow, all that's going to happen in a week. Um, you guys are on different time frames. For some of you, it might be bam, 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 back to back all in one week. And for some of you, the ball is rolling this week. And this may be a three-week or a four-week process for some of you. But I feel a really powerful um, uh, coming into realization, identity, purpose, power, and awakening. It, it's very powerful energy, Taurus. Okay, you may want to check out your moon sign and rising sign videos. Some weeks those are going to resonate with you more than others. You may want to uh, check out the love readings for November. Those are linked in the description. If you would like a private reading with me, you can schedule by going to calendly.com slash amethystangelite and schedule a private reading with me there. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I'm wishing you all a wonderful week ahead, my darlings. Be well and take care.